Good evening and welcome to the 2019 Cleveland International Hall of Fame induction ceremony and dinner. We have a wonderful evening ahead. Some very esteemed people who are going to be speaking tonight. Thank you for joining us. My name is Chris Tanaka. I'll be your master of ceremonies for the evening. Now that everyone is seated, thank you for that. Kim. Appreciate that. And now that everyone is seated at your tables, I'll ask you to pre please rise for the presentation of the colors and the singing of our national anthem, please, and thank you. say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the Ladies and gentlemen, the presentation of the colors from the Cleveland Fire Department Honor Guard. A round of applause for them, please. And this young man to my right who just led us through our national anthem is Giovanni Castiglione, Gio as he's known, if you can believe it. He's only a junior at Solon High and he is so far accomplished beyond his years. A round of applause for him. He began singing publicly at the age of eight, and not just in English. He actually sang the U.S., Canadian, and Italian national anthem. So this isn't his first rodeo. <laughs> Joe would love to stay, but Joe, you're off for practice? practice. <laughs> of course, practice makes purpose. One more round of applause. Thank you, Joe. Have a seat, everyone. Let's have a great night. And thank you for coming out tonight. We have a wonderful evening ahead. I've seen some previous uh, inductees here tonight, hundreds of people gathered to celebrate the accomplishments of these six individuals you see on stage. I had the great honor of having conversations with each of them and finding out a little bit about them and their accomplishments and what made them inductees into the class of 2019. People who are up on this stage tonight are not only professionally accomplished, but they have a sense of philanthropy in their hearts to serve their communities, to serve Cleveland, to serve their coworkers, and really make our city and our communities a better place. 
Over the course of the evening, you'll be uh, introduced to these six individuals and learn about them as well. Uh, and we have everyone from CEOs to architects um, to some really incredibly involved people who care for others both passionately and certainly professionally. 41 years a nurse, one of them. Thank you so much for attending. Again, my name is Chris Tanaka. I'll be leading us through the night. Um, I do want to call up uh, one person here, Dan Hansen. Where are you, Dan? Come on up. Dan and Debbie make this whole thing work. This is the 10th year, 10th year of the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. It's a hallmark. Dan, it's a milestone. A couple of words. Well, I'm going to give you a lot more words than that soon, but just to start off, I'm just one of the people, my sister Debbie really deserves most of the credit, and my mom, Debbie's in the back there somewhere. There she is. I'll tell you about her situation in a minute, but uh, we're very fortunate in a very tough year to have, because of these six great people up here, to have so many of you here to honor them and to honor the idea of cultural diversity in Cleveland, which makes this city so great. There's very few cities that have 120 distinct ethnic groups represented, and we're very fortunate to have that, and the people in this room get it. The people up here on the dais know that and have lived it and are the reasons that, that Cleveland is such a great city. So really want to thank Chris for being here. He's a pro working with him last few years. He's not one of those anchors who sits and reads a teleprompter. You see him out in the community at the Cleveland Asian Festival, at One World Day, various places. I hope you saw his interviews the last six days running with, with these six. Um, it was great. That'll all be online. There'll be links to it. We went out to the cultural gardens, which was very cool, because five of the six inductees have cultural gardens of their heritage. So Ingrida was in the Lithuanian garden, the upper level mostly. Paul, Paul's always in the Czech garden, so of course he was there. Dr. Boutrous, there's no Egyptian garden yet. But you know, whale, Lord, Sammy, you know, let's, we'll see when we get an Egyptian. So Dr. Boutrous got to choose did he want to be by a scientist like Tesla or Copernicus or Madame Curie or an artist like Beethoven or Bach or, you know, a statesperson? And he chose to uh, be by the Mother Teresa statue in the Albanian garden, which was pretty cool. And then, of course, Marilyn in the Irish garden, she gravitated right to the Padraig Pierce bus, who, if you know Marilyn, that makes a lot of sense. Sri, when you've got a 20-foot statue of Gandhi, you've got to go there. And of course, Richard in the Hungarian garden, which is such a beautiful garden. And I know when Chris was there and his cameraman, they looked down from the upper level. We were on East Boulevard and were just blown away at the awesomeness of that garden. So it's great to have Chris here. He's a real pro, a member of the community, and uh, we're looking forward to a great night. Thanks, Chris. Far too kind. Far too kind. We have a wonderful dinner tonight, and we'll get to it in a moment. But first, uh, I'd like to bring up uh, Sridhara Shri for a brief blessing before we have our dinner. As he makes his way to the stage, let me just read some of this, his accomplishments. He's a priest at the Shiva Vishnu Temple of Greater Cleveland, and he's been involved in religious studies for a long time, since his childhood. It's what he's passionate about, and certainly we benefit from his presence tonight. Namaste. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sridhar Asri, and I am the priest at Shiva Vishnu Temple at Parma, Ohio. I am going to chant the mantras. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvina Vadhi Tamastuma Vidvishavahai Om Shanti 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 Hi Sasti Prajabhya Paripala Yantam Nyayena Margena Mahim Mahishaha Go Brahmhena Vishva Mastanityam Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Sarvejana Sukino Bhavantu Samasta San Mangala Nisantu I'm going to read the meaning for these stanzas. Om, may God protect us all. May God nourish us all. May we work together with energy and 
enthusiasm. May our knowledge be enlightening without giving rise to hostility. Om, peace, peace, peace. May there be happiness for all people. May the rulers righteously rule the earth. May there be welfare for the animals and men of wisdom all the times. May all beings be happy and prosperous. May all be prosperous and happy. May all be free from illness. May all see what is spirituality uplifting. May no one suffer. Peace, peace, peace. Thank you. Namaste. I'd like to bring Dan back up. He's got some thanks to make. Of course, when it comes to um, being a member, an inductee into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame, we talked earlier about what it takes, certainly, um, from the personal perspective. Uh, being active, being engaged, uplifting your community, representing your ethnic heritage as it should be. But also, you have to get nominated. And there is a nomination process where you can be nominated by someone else, uh, be it a co-worker, uh, a peer, or someone in your community, or you can nominate yourself. That's just the start of it. There are specifics. They're in your guidebooks. But you've got to be nominated to get in. And Dan, this year, there are a lot of nominees, correct? 120 or something. Yeah. Come on up. OK. How's dinner? Great. All right. We're going to, as soon as they get a break, get some of the wait staff and chefs out here to thank them personally. We appreciate their service. They did a great job. So when they come out, we'll give them a nice round of applause. Um, I want to thank some of our table sponsors for making this event possible. And feel free to clap and make noise if you want. This is Holy Week for some of us, but this isn't a church, so go for it. Um, Margaret Wong and Associates Table. Mm. Akram Boutras and Family Table. Alex Machaski and Associates. The Cleveland American Middle East Organization, ALCC Lebanese Garden. All right. Cleveland Cultural Gardens Federation. The Confucius Institute at Cleveland State University. Here's one that might need a little exp explaining. The Gaelic Glen Alpacas. So, if you've been to certain events, especially the St. Patrick's Day Parade the last few years, you'll see these alpacas marching in the parade. I mean the animal, like llamas, but they're alpacas. And they wear little hats and green suits. They're so cool. They're like the highlight of the parade, and they're the Gaelic Glen alpacas. And at the end, you know, if you have the mounted police, they have to have a clean up after them because there's horses. They have a... a kid dresses a leprechaun with a, a potty of gold and he cleans up after the alpacas so glad to have the Gaelic Glen alpacas here. Um, Global Cleveland Case Western Reserve. The Indian community of Cleveland. The International Community Council Worldwide Intercultural Network. Quite a mouthful. The Ladies Ancient Order of Hibernians. All right. Metro Health Hospital. Richard Fleischman family. Siwa International. And the Vietnamese Cultural Garden. Wow. Debbie and I also want to thank our helpers tonight. Um, Rania Abadi, Olivia Ortega, Yulu Lee, Anita Kazarian, that's, those names are, are Cleveland. I mean, that, they're this event, right? We got Yulu and Olivia and Rania and Anita. So thanks to them. Thanks to our photographers. Tim Ryan, Ed O'Shaba, and Anjan Ghost, Harry Weller. Um, special thanks to the Cleveland Firefighters Honor Guard. My mom's 
father and brother were Cleveland firefighters. So that's my uncle and grandfather. So it's very special to have you guys here. Okay. So this, you know, this is the 10th, 10th anniversary, as Chris has told you. Um, any of you been to all 10? Ed, okay. Ken, all right. Few of you. Anda, Yao, very good. Me, Debbie. Okay. Um, we wanted to make it a little special. So the book we think is really cool. It's very glossy and expensive. And, and we have something called crudite out there, which if my rugby teammates heard me saying crudite, they didn't beat me up. And uh, we're having a raffle at the end bef before we adjourn with some really good prizes that you're all entered into. And we've got these six very special people. So it's kind of amazing that we even have an event this year. It's been a very tough year in many ways, if you read the book. We lost our, uh, one of our founding board members, Bill Carney, uh, this year unexpectedly. He went into the hospital for some stomach pains and never came out. A couple weeks later, that was it. So we really missed Bill. We lost three Hall of Famers, Sam Miller, Jack Kale, and Tony Picosa all passed away, too. It's been a very tough year. We should, if we could have a moment of silence for, for those four. Okay, thank you. And as we see with the Hall of Fame, sometimes people are older as they get inducted, and, and we're going to have issues like that. But that's what's good about the Hall of Fame, because the videos and their stories and their legacy can be preserved and inspire a whole new, whole new generation. So, and as many as you know, it's been a very tough year. Personally, uh, our mom, Pat, uh, has been in and out of rehab, had a heart attack, various things. She couldn't make it tonight, the first one she's missed. She's at home. Um, we miss her. She said to say hi to all the friends she's met over the years. So here's what I want you to do. When I count to three, if you would all just say hi, Pat. So that when she watches on TV 20 later or on Channel 19, she can do that. So um, one, two, three, hi, Pat. One, two, three. Hi. hi. All right, very cool. And surprisingly, with all the stress and all, we were really shocked when Debbie had a stroke in December, of all things. So she, whole left side of her body messed up some short-term memory loss. The good news is she's uh, going to have no permanent damage. The bad news is uh, rehab is taking forever, still in the wheelchair, does the walker and therapy. It's amazing what she did for the Hall of Fame using one hand. You know, she'd pick up the phone with the left and it'd just fall because she didn't have it. So she's here, very grateful for you, what you did, very tough time, and thank you, Debbie. So. So that's, that's the depressing stuff. So let, let me turn around now, because this is a great night and it's an exciting night. So we were looking for some funding for a, a physical museum for the Hall of Fame and make some phone calls. And we get this very well-to-do uh, individual on the phone and explain the mission and yeah, yeah. He goes, let me stop you right there. He says, you may not know it, but my son is about to go bankrupt. And my daughter just lost her house. My grandkids are just about at college age and my church burnt down and I'm feeling terrible thing. I'm about to say you know don't worry about us all that so he, he continues on he says so if I don't give anything to them why should I give anything to you so so that was supposed to be a joke but um, <laughs> um, let's see we have some other people here tonight because it's the 10th anniversary you know those people that first year we didn't know we had no TV coverage like Chris is providing, Channel 19 and 43. We didn't have radio. We had some website stuff and all. But we feel they kind of got short shrift on that. So I'd like to just go through real quickly the people of the inaugural class and just tell you uh, it was a big class of 13, so I'll go fast. But they're really important people who should get some recognition. First is a friend of uh, Richard, a very good friend of Richard Fleischmann from the Hungarian community, Jenny Brown. Jenny Criselli Brown was that first year very deserving uh, member of the Hungarian community. The second person was someone that I guarantee only one table knows. His name was Dr. Du Duck Do. And he was Vietnamese. And Yao Ryan and Joe Meisner and their Friendship Foundation brought hundreds of people over from Vietnam to settle in Cleveland. So Dr. Do 
back then was the only medical professional they had. He spoke the language, he treated them, the only one they trusted. He did so much work in the community. While you have some big names in the Hall of Fame, it's very important to have the people like Dr. Doe, who really helped their community are important to be inducted as well. So he was there. We did research and found German heritage is the largest in Ohio. So many different German groups, Donna Schwaben and various Bavarian groups and all. The unifying event seemed to be Oktoberfest. And the guy who ran that and is still running it to this day is Bob Haas. And Bob is with us here today. <laughs> Next was Helen Karpinski, who, for you political people, know that name, the Karpinski name. Mercedes, Diana, and Gloria followed that up. In 1939, she ran for Cleveland City Council in oh, about 88th and Superior. That, that was the old 21st Ward. Tony, correct me if I'm wrong. I know you weren't around at 39, but no, okay. But that's, she, it was historic. She was the first woman running for Cleveland City Council. She didn't win that one, but she paved the way. She was very uh, important in the Polish community, helping to establish and maintain the Polish cultural garden. So. Then we come to a, a, what I call a double threat guy, Alex Wachowski. And Alex, who is here with us tonight, he's, he's a double threat because he would be inducted in the Hall of Fame just for his work in the Serbian community. His intercultural missions, his bringing in choirs and events and organizations, his work with his son Lex in the Serbian Cultural Garden. You have to visit that garden. Every year they have a new bust and it's not, you know, you learn a lot. You learn about Einstein's wife, who was Serbian, who may have been smarter than Einstein. You know, so Alex definitely for a Serbian work. But as publisher of the Plain Dealer, he had vision and he knew how important ethnic communities and ethnic people were to Cleveland. And he established this section called Mosaic. How many of you remember Mosaic? Yeah, it was fantastic. And he he, he put different groups up there and featured the ethnic community. So. Alex a double duty uh, Fred and Ducty. And then the Irish. The Irish are a large and proud community in Cleveland and there's a lot of groups. It's, you know, Maggie, Maggie Lynch back there can tell you how many different Irish groups there are. There's probably 30 some or more. And, and my sister Debbie was president of the Irish American Club East Side, but the West Side group was older and larger and you know, so you couldn't really compete. You needed something unifying there. There, there were the Hibernians and other groups. So we looked for someone who was unifying, and it was a no-brainer to induct a lady named Lonnie McCauley, who passed away tragically um, years ago. Beginning with her, with her thesis, which was the uh, Irish director of Greater Cleveland, she was the greatest promoter of Irish culture and history that we had. She was the Grand Marshal of the 2001 St. Patrick's Day Parade, the first woman ever to be Grand Marshal of the Parade, uh, first Irish American archivist at the Western Reserve Historical Society, Irish Famine Memorial Committee. You know, if you go to the Flatiron Cafe and you look across, you see that 11-ton Celtic cross in the flats honoring the victims of the famine and those who had to emigrate because of the famine. That was a lot of Lonnie's work. She founded, helped found the Padraig Pierce Center, the first Irish American library, all these things. She's taken away from us way too young, but Lonnie McCauley was a, a, a terrific first inductee from the Irish community. And, and she has family members here. Irene Morrow was in that first class. Irene Morrow is always associated with uh, Mayor Perk. She served as uh, Secretary of the Civil Service Commission of the City of Cleveland. First Lady Barbara Bush honored Irene as one of the 40 outstanding women of Ohio. She's had all kinds of awards from the Flonia Foundation, Polish Woman of the Year, Polish Person of the Year, all of that. But probably we know Irene best lately for her role with the American Nationalities Movement. And that was started by Ralph Perk Sr. And they merged with Captive Nations Week, which uh, President Eisenhower and every president since has recognized. And Irene was pre very offices in the ANM, but served as president for a long time and uh, kept that important organization going. So Irene is with us here tonight. <laughs> Over there is August Pust, who you should spend some time with. He has worked for 
mayors, senators, governors, and even presidents of the U.S. He is a walking encyclopedia of international relationships. He has worked on trade missions, cultural exchanges, everything to do with ethnic heritage. And sometime ask him, you know, he's born in Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. When he came here in 57, August, he tells a story of when he first saw the Statue of Liberty, and it'll give you chills. So sometime grab August Poos, buy him a cup of coffee, and ask him about seeing the Statue of Liberty when he came here in 57. It's, it's really cool. Thank you, August. A couple more. Paul Sharia, uh, some of you may know him as arguably the first TV investigative reporter before the I team, before Carl Mundy, is Paul Sharia. But he's best known as the uh, editor and owner of La Gazzetta Italiana. He was the voice of the Italian American community. And then there's Paramjit Singh, who uh, is, Linda is ill tonight, so he couldn't make it. Um, he's been a community leader, one of the first Indians in Cleveland. He arrived in 62. With the Cleveland Council on World Affairs, he had the first India Republic Day event. It was the 13th Republic Day back then. He helped establish the India Association of Cleveland. He made history at Case Western Reserve. He was the first turban Sikh to be a graduate uh, of Case West Reserve in 65. So instead of the mortar board, he wore his turban. And he was the one who said, hey, this country has given us so much. Let's give back. The Indian community is, is doing pretty good. And he went and talked to the leaders at FICA, and they come up, came up with their own project, Sewa, not to be confused with uh, Sri Sewa. And at that first induction ceremony, Pramja got up and ad-libbed this song, I Love Cleveland in the Springtime, from the old Paris saying. It was really cool. Um, George Voinovich was one of those no-brainers. Again, Ohio House of Reps, council, county commissioner, mayor, senator, governor, all those things. He's really important uh, in strengthening and enlarging NATO when he was a senator, all kinds of national security politics. But he was a good combination. He had a Serbian father, and uh, Alex will claim George is completely Serbian, and August will claim him as Slovenian, because his mother was Slovenian. Uh, George's father actually worked in what was then the Yugoslav Garden in the 30s, and his mother was Slovenian. And he's from Collinwood, and what he would always say, I think many of you have heard him say this, um, he has found over the years that people who are proud of their ethnic heritage are great Americans. And that's, that's so true. He's, uh, two more people. This one you may know, um, he's, he was inducted posthumously, Leo Weidenthal. Back in the early 1900s, he was the editor of the Cleveland Jewish Independent. He was the founder of the Cleveland chapter of the National Conference of Christians and Jews, and because of him, Cleveland was one of the first cities in the country to have a chapter of the, that conference. He's also a Shakespeare fan and a reporter, and in, in 1916, it was the 300th anniversary of the death of Shakespeare, so he goaded the city into having some of this land uh, in Rockefeller Park turned into a Shakespeare garden. And, and then through his journalistic and speaking uh, prowess, he said, you know, we should have other, the city should give land for other gardens, and they should be dedicated to the nationality communities. So then by, it took some time, but in 1926, they started the Cultural Garden League, and then there was the Hebrew Garden, and the whole Cleveland Cultural Garden, and the Federation began. So Leo Weidenthal was the guy behind that, and his, his kids were there uh, 10 years ago. And the final person, and alphabetically, it's, you know, it's a shame, but Margaret Wong, who's in New York tonight, but sends her regards. She's built Margaret W. Wong and Associates uh, into probably the premier immigration and uh, nationality law firm in the country. She's an Ellis Island Medal recipient. She's won every award you can win. Uh, she's the first Asian American president of, of one of the, the Federal Bar Association chapters. Just, she's, she's been everything. And if she hasn't already supported one of your efforts, one of your ethnic efforts, look to your left, look to your right, and I guarantee you she supported one of those because she is the greatest supporter of uh, ethnic programs in Cleveland that we have. So that's the 2010 class. Um, I do want to just quickly 
We have some other inductees here, and I'm going to ask you to stand up. I'll go through it quickly. So it's from 2010, and remain standing. Bob Haas, Alex Machaski, Lonnie McCauley is represented by her sister and brother-in-law, Diane and Jim Lardy, and her daughter, Caitlin. Irene Morrow, August Pust, and someone from Margaret Wong's office, if you'd stand. 2011, Jerry Quinn and Yawa Ryan are here. Stand up. 2012, Dr. Jaya Shah, represented by her husband, Ramesh, and Councilwoman Mary Rose Okar. I haven't seen Mary Rose yet. Ken Kovach. Jose Feliciano, and Anthony Yen, who we just learned uh, has taken ill uh, yesterday. 2013, uh, Dr. Maria Puhana. 2014, Eugene Bach. Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Meisner. Ernie Mihaly. 2016, Carolyn Balog. Eugenia Stolarsic. 2017, Dr. Whale Curry, Jim Creation, and last year we have Judge Ralph Perk Jr. So did I miss anyone who's here? Okay, let me turn it back to Chris, and uh, we'll get on to the, the 2019 class. Thank you. Thanks for that, Dan. Important to honor all those individuals. All right, now to the inductions. These six individuals, their accomplishments are any many, but the people who are actually going to be introducing them are names that are familiar to you. Their efforts are ones that we've all felt, and of course they've made Northeast Ohio a better place. So I'll be calling them up one by one, and they will give their induction speeches. Inducting Dr. Akram Boutros is a man we all know. He's part of the leadership for our county. He's Cuyahoga County Executive Armin Butish. He'll be coming to the stage. His accomplishments, we all know, currently serving his second term as our county executive, four-term Ohio State representative. He served as Speaker of the House as well, and keeping with the theme of diversity, he was actually, I believe, the first Jewish representative to hold uh, the office of Speaker of the House, correct? Wonderful. Cuyahoga County Executive, Armin Butish, introducing Dr. Akram Boutros. Good evening, everybody. So um, this is hard because I was told I could only do two minutes, and they said it's a tight deadline, and it's hard to uh, talk about uh, Dr. Boutros in two minutes, but I'll do my best. Uh, and also, by the way, the best part of this tonight is that I got to sit at your family's table. That was wonderful. Um, so it's my honor to be able to introduce you to uh, one of tonight's inductees, Dr. Boutros. As many of you know, Dr. Akram Boutros is one of the most influential and transformative leaders here in Cuyahoga County. Uh, Dr. Boutros and I have had the pleasure of working together on a large number of major initiatives. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, most important, all have to do with uh, Metro Health Hospital. Uh, and yesterday, I had the opportunity to attend the groundbreaking for the new, uh, something like a billion dollar transformation uh, of the Metro campus, and I will tell you, uh, this is going to make the, a huge difference in this community, uh, and, and it was a real pleasure to see uh, the ground break and this project get underway. Um, uh, that project uh, will transform healthcare for the entire region, uh, and not only healthcare, but it's going to transform the near west side, and it, it, the impacts of this are, are broad and and uh, fabulous. Uh, but that's not all he has done. I mean, he's been involved in so many activities, and again, I've been able to share some of those with him. Uh, he's been a leader in attacking the opioid crisis here in Northeast Ohio. Um, he um, uh, has been a leader in tackling a tragic infant mortality problem we have here, uh, and has been key uh, to reducing the infant mortality rate here in Northeast Ohio. Um, I, could go, I could go on and on because there's just one thing after another, but um, since I only have two minutes, I have to scale it back. Uh, but um, uh, he's only been here in this uh, community uh, as president and CEO of Metro Health since 
2013, yet if you look at all his accomplishments, you would have thought he'd been here for his entire life. Um, Dr. Boutros will tell you that uh, the most important thing you can do is to do what you love, and clearly Dr. Boutros is doing that. Uh, he clearly loves his job, and that you can see in everything he does. Uh, so I want to congratulate Dr. Akram Boutros on this award tonight, uh, and I also uh, have a congratulations from a close friend. Um, I didn't know how close he was, but he told me he's very close to you. Uh, also a prior recipient of the 2011 class, uh, asked me to send his congratulations, Albert Ratner. Thank you very much. For all of you, you'll pose here with your inductor. I don't think I have a two t a two minute time limit. If, if I do, I don't listen anyway, so it's quite all right. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, County Executive Butis. It's a pleasure for me to be here with all of you. Um, you know, I, I, I came to America at the age of twelve and decided to uh, become an American. Decided to do everything I can uh, to do uh, to become an American. And um, that, ne that doesn't mean forgetting your heritage. As a matter of fact, my wife asked me to, uh, she said she's going to do, wanted us to all do our 23andMe, so did our genetic uh, testing, and it turned out I'm 99.7% Egyptian. So for, for those of you who don't know what that means, it means that our, my family tree is one large trunk and a couple of leaves, right? <laughs> So when, when, however, when I think about um, uh, the, uh, the, the cultural diversity of America, I actually think of my wife, Suzanne. Uh, when she did her um, uh, 23 Me, it turns out she's Irish, English, uh, French, uh, Italian, um, uh, Lebanese, Turkish, Russian. I think, I think aside from Japanese, and uh, Australian, she's everything else. So, <laughs> so I, I have to tell you, I am I'm uh, delighted to be uh, representing the Arabic community. I'm also delighted to be representing the mixture of all cultures in America. Thank you so very, very much. So I just have to tell you that, but, but along with their award. Each inductee will receive a proclamation from not only County Executive Budish, Governor Mike DeWine, Senator Rob Portman, Attorney General David Yost, Congresswoman Marcia Mar Fudge, Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson, Cleveland City Council, thank you Tony, State Senator Matt Dolan, and State Rep Tom Patton. They'll also get your much coveted uh, Cleveland International Hall of Fame lapel pin. So let me give you those and then... This microphone wants to come loose. Be aware, Ingrida. Introducing Ingrida Bublis is a man that you just uh, heard Dan speak of. He was part of that initial class of 2010 into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame, Alex uh, Machaski. And as a journalist, I can say thank you for your efforts, sir, uh, in what you did for the Plain Dealer and what you did for the people of Northeast Ohio and Ohio in general. That name, that paper uh, symbolized something, and it still does to this day. Uh, we're at a point in time where journalism is an interesting space to occupy. And when you look at people like this, who made a difference in our community and really kind of honed the skills of journalists in their charge, 
and made people in the community better and more informed, I have a personal debt of gratitude to pay. Alex. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here this evening because when I was inducted 10 years ago, I couldn't make it. <laughs> I had to send a video. But uh, I also loved Mosaic. And unfortunately, when I retired 13 years ago, three months later, they killed Mosaic. So that was the end of that. I'd like to offer my congratulations to this evening's outstanding Assembly of Honorees. It's an honor for me to be asked to introduce Ingrida Bublis, the Honorary Consul General of the Republic of Lithuania. Ingridia, in my view, is a gem in the crown jewels of diplomacy. She is revered by Lithuanians in the United States and Lithuania. Ingrida, as president of IB International Inc., has accomplished much in her 30 years in business development and company representation between Baltic states like Latvia and Estonia and the United States. IB International represents a number of U.S. companies in various industry sectors while also representing and opening doors for a diverse range of Lithuanian companies in the U.S. Ingrida has secured and established contacts for trade development for various Baltic companies as well as U.S. companies and developed a strong network across diverse commercial and government interests. She organized the World Lithuanian Economic Conference in Chicago. She is a rare combination of successful international businesswoman and ethnic community leader. Ingrida serves on various boards. She's been awarded the Order of Grand Duke of Vintatus the Great by the Lithuanian government, the American Nationalities Movement, Eagle Award, and the International Rotary Club International Service Award. Last year, in Lithuania, on the occasion of Lithuania's centennial of the restoration of independence, Ingrida was chosen one of the 100 women of Lithuania that all Lithuanians worldwide are proud of, and many other recognitions she's uh, bestowed upon her from the Lithuanian community and the business communities. Ingrida has been the Honorary General Consul of the Republic of Lithuania for the states of Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky for the past 22 years, promoting friendly relations between Lithuania and the United States. She has established good relations with city and state officials, educational institutions, and U.S. corporations. She's an active networker through various organizations and developing contacts. I always wanted to emulate Ingrida because I see Lithuanian flags everywhere. So I said to the Prime Minister of Serbia a few years back, I said, you know, I watch what the Lithuanians and others do, I said, but when I want to fly a Serbian flag over City Hall, I have to use my own precious big flag. So the very next time the Prime Minister came to Cleveland, he brought me a Serbian flag. It was this big, it was a desk flag. I think they spend all their money on Shlivovitz, quite honestly. <laughs> Ingrid is instrumental in connecting Ohio universities with Lithuanian universities and various exchange programs. On the state level, a relationship between the Department of Agriculture, Ohio, and the Ministry of Agriculture in Lithuania. She is a tireless organizer of trade missions while successfully bringing cultural events and providing access for Lithuanian government officials to key decision U.S. makers and the people of influence. She's been involved with Lithuanian community cultural activities over the years and has supported the Lithuanian Club, the Lithuanian Cultural Garden, Lithuanian cultural groups, and more. She even marches in parades. Her business acumen has earned her leadership roles in the Rotary Club of Cleveland. We here in Cleveland have been proud of Ingrida for many years. Probably the Lithuanian government calling you, Ingrida. <laughs> and I'm very proud to induct her and welcome her into the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you with the First Lady of the Cleveland Consular Corps, Ingrida Bubalis.
Well, good evening. I'm truly very honored in receiving this recognition and also to be inducted by my colleague, Consul of Serbia, Alex Majeski. Thank you so much. He's truly a, one of the pillars in this great community of Cleveland. And thank you, Alex, for those lovely words. At this time, I would also like to commend clevelandpeople.com for organizing and establishing this International Hall of Fame. And for their dedication, actually, to always um, watch what all these ethnic communities do and to always document our work. Thank you so much, clevelandpeople.com, and that's Debbie Hansen and Dan Hansen. I would like to congratulate all the inductees this evening. At this time, I would also would like to thank my parents, actually, who installed in me the love of their homeland, Lithuania. My husband and my children, who have been great supporters through my activities throughout the years. You know, it was mentioned that 10 years ago, was the first installation class of the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. It just seems like yesterday. And I had the honor that evening in 2010 to induct Senator George Voinovich. I'll never forget George Voinovich. He was such a conscientious person of all of his constituents. He stood by all our countries that at that time were yearning that freedom would ring on their shores. And you know, it was also mentioned tonight that George Voinovich had said, if you are proud of your heritage, you are a great American. You know, as I look down this evening, I see Cleveland a truly beautiful tapestry. You all are the people that are proud of your heritage and the workers that make this land great that we call America. And events like this, like this evening banquet, encourage us, all of us, to keep on working for a better world. Thank you all so much. Some wonderful words, Agrita. Tell you, one of my favorite places in Cleveland is University Circle. It's such a rich tapestry of education, medicine, arts, and culture. When you go there, you go to Wade Oval, you don't, you don't just visit, you experience it. You can feel an energy, you can feel a vibe, and you realize that there's something going on. To introduce Paul Burek, a man who quite literally helped build Cleveland, is a man who is the driving force behind University Circle and in so many ways is doing the same through his own efforts. His name's Chris Ronay and you know him all. His accomplishments are too many, but please, Chris, come on up. All right, anybody who just got that on video for the 11 o'clock news, we're gonna put it on. Thank you for the commercial on University Circle, but like uh, the previous speaker just said, Ingrid, this is Cleveland, and if University Circle is anything, it is Cleveland. It's the people of Cleveland, and uh, by association, the Cultural Gardens, which I have the pleasure of being in every day to and from work and a lot of other reasons to be there. How many of you today, uh, to this evening, are somehow associated with the Cleveland Cultural Garden Federation? Hey, hey, here's to you. That's about half of our crowd, and I know the rest of you, how much you appreciate that. Um, well, so too is Paul Burek, and uh, I never knew that I was going to see more of Paul Burek after City Hall, uh, because we both worked about 500 yards right outside that window at a place that we love, uh, City Hall, Cleveland City Hall. Um, we're both veterans and expats of it, but it's always in us. But I, the good fortune is I see more of Paul Burek outside of City Hall than I even did back then. Um, it was an honor and a pleasure just briefly to meet his family in the family table. Would you give a wave out there tonight, please, from the family of the Burek family? 
So I went to the family to dig up dirt, find anything I could know that I didn't know about Paul. But unfortunately, Paul is consistent, both in his family, and unfortunate for us, and, uh, and in the community. And truly, fortunately, he is consistent. I, I asked his son and daughter, uh, well, what about dad? And they said, well, he's out in the community a lot. He gives a lot of his time. He never stops giving to the community. And we know that about you. Uh, your cousin said you never let the grass grow under your feet. You're always on the move. We know that about you. And your wife finally gave me something I didn't know about you, that uh, Paul Burek came here uh, as a young uh, kid uh, to a uh, community, to a country that welcomed him. And he knew very few words in the English language. I also, in good humor, learned that you didn't know what a hot dog was, and you were afraid to have one, but you had one anyways, and you became an American. Um, your Aunt Margaret said that she had the pleasure to spend a lot of time with you as a kid in Lakewood, uh, and uh, took you in. And this is the family here tonight, and your family extended in Cleveland, who honor you, Paul, for the person you are, a consistent giver, a doer an activist in the Cleveland community in Greater Cleveland. So it's my honor uh, as someone who served at City Hall um, to introduce Paul Burek tonight and um, to help bring him into the Hall of Fame. I do want to say to Dan and Debbie, thank you for all you do. Your mom's got to be proud of you guys. Uh, it's all right here, Cleveland people. Um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame stars come and go. They come and get their award across the mall and sometimes in New York and we put them up in the hall and we go pay our respects. But I think of the Hall of Fames this is the Hall of Fame that really matters in Cleveland. Um, at your 2016 100th anniversary of the Cleveland Cultural Gardens, we get the pleasure to speak. Um, Dr. Curry's here tonight and those who came before him. And we said of that uh, Leo Weidenthal vision to have a garden that would reflect all of Cleveland's people. I'm so glad you brought it up tonight. And it was that Shakespeare garden that was the first garden in the park. And it was William Shakespeare himself who said, what of a city but its people? And I think that is what we're all about. The people of Cleveland are what make this place. And Paul Burek really epitomizes uh, who we are as Clevelanders. Um, he is a connector. <clears throat> he is an educator. And he is an advocate. Anecdotally at City Hall, I know Councilman Brancatelli, and I saw Councilman Simperman earlier, former Councilman Simperman, that we all sort of, unfortunately, all too often at the hall, found ourselves in pipelines. The engineers would work in one corner, the planners where I worked in another corner, and the designers in another corner. But Paul, as an architect, designer, and somebody who cared, was truly a bridge. He would bridge between floors, he would bridge between departments, and he was a communicator, educator, advocate who cared. He cares about the big picture, and he cares about the small details. And that's what Paul Burek brought to, I guess, his second career at the Cleveland Cultural Garden Federation. Paul was born in the city of Budvar. Uh, yes, the namesake of Budweiser beer. Paul, I made it to uh, Czech Republic this fa last uh, fall, actually saw that beer, uh, had that beer, and then uh, didn't make it over to Budvar, but Budvar is everywhere. <laughs> and uh, what is now um, Czech Republic, he and his father came over in 1968 after the Soviet invasion. Um, he attended Kent State University where he received a degree in architecture and he spent much of his professional career, as I said, at Cleveland City Hall. I remember him on the Landmarks Commission and the Streetscape Committee, again, minding the details and bridging people and finding a way, if it's not this way or that way, it was the third way that Paul Burek helped us see, another way to get things done. And we need more of that these days and Paul, you taught us. He is now... Um, very active, as you know, with the Cleveland Cultural Gardens, has been very active um, as a past president of the umbrella organization that you represent, 30 and growing uh, national gardens, and currently serves as vice president. He is the chapter president of Svazvedi Aumene. How bad was that? Close. close. All right, I'll take close. Uh, easier known as SVU. Uh, Czechoslovak Society of Arts and Sciences organization dedicated to advancing the understanding of Czech, Slovak, and Russian cultures. I will say on the centennial anniversary that you hosted us in this past two summers ago, um, he was once again a bridge, very mindful of three unique cultures connected together. Um, and he, he, he embodied that on the day uh, that we spent with you in the park. Um, Thank you for being the bridge across our ethnicities, and in that case, the Czechs, the Slovak, and the Rusin. Paul is also a member of Sokol Greater Cleveland, Czech athletic and cultural organization where he serves on the cultural committee. He's a member of the Cleveland Bratislava Sister Cities and Kapatha Rusin Society. 
In his hometown, when he has any time left, uh, in the town of Avon, um, Paul Burek is past president of the French Creek Foundation, an organization which he co-founded 25 years ago to improve and promote the downtown area of Avon. And you're succeeding, by the way, in that I've seen. He also served as chairman of the planning commission there, developing the town's master plan and zoning regulations. So I guess the operative tonight, on top of your dad, your husband, your nephew, uh, your cousin being consistent, He's always giving. Thank you to the family for giving Paul Burek and therefore his time to us in this community, to the family of the Bureks, to you guys. <laughs> Paul volunteers all throughout his community, Lorraine Sailing and the Yacht Club Teaching Sailing. He's a past rear commodore, vice commodore, and commodore of that club. And with his wife, Fran, and a combined family of five adult children, eight grandchildren, who we've introduced a few of, and cousins, aunts and uncles, they all enjoy Paul's time, and Paul enjoys gardening, cooking, and traveling with them. Um, he is a true, true public servant, the one who remembers the service side of public service, the one who remembers that we are all, ultimately, as Clevelanders, after similar goals for our community. But he's a bridge builder, he's a connector, he's an educator, and he's an advocate, and he's an advocate for what this is all about, Cleveland people and our glorious diversity. Paul Burek, congratulations. It's on. Well, thank you uh, uh, for, for the award. And, and what makes it really special to me is uh, that I was introduced uh, by Chris Rone, a colleague and, and a friend. And uh, thank you, Chris, for a um, uh, very eloquent uh, presentation. So uh, thank you for that. And as you think about who to thank, uh, of course, it's so, so difficult. There were so many people, some of whom may have done things along the way, pushed you in the right, the right direction, or so, and I never knew that they did that. Conversely, uh, there were situations where uh, people made comments or, or took action that they probably never knew uh, were uh, so meaningful to me, uh, but they were. Uh, for example, uh, when I was studying architecture at uh, Kent State University, we ha I had a professor, a Ukrainian fellow called Osip Martinuk. And uh, the, uh, the drill in a school was pretty much Monday, we got our task through the week. We were drawing and drawing and making sketches and solving the problem. Friday, we would turn in our drawings. Saturday, uh, Mr. Uh, Professor Martin would come and, and mark them up. We would say, how, how bad did he bleed over your boards? And um, um, then Monday, we would review his markups and get his comments. And, and often, we, say, we would say, but Mr. Martin, if, if you would only let us explain, then you would know what we were trying to do, et cetera. And uh, also, I can call him Osip now, I guess. Uh, and um, he would say, boys, your drawings are your voice. Let them speak for you. And then he would slam uh, the desk with, uh, with a ruler that he carried around just to make sure we're up and paying attention. And, and that comment repeated itself a number of times. And it resonated in my head, and, and, and it still does. As years added on, went by, I realized it's not just the drawings, but it's all the work that, that we are doing or that, that I was doing. And, and so it kind of morphed into, Paul, the work is your voice. It shall speak for you. And that was my guiding principles, uh, principle as uh, time went on. So. I want to thank everybody who may have touched my path, uh, whether they knew it or not. Um, but there are, uh, there are a lot of people that, that had their hands in, in what has happened. 
of course, as Chris pointed out, I, I do need to thank my family. Uh, probably speaking for most of the people on the board, uh, surely for myself, we have done a lot of things, spent a lot of time going to meetings, planning meetings, planning events, going to events, and being uh, brutally honest, our, our families paid the price. Uh, so I do want to uh, point out the immediate family. Uh, Fran Burek, my wife, has been by my side. Those of you who know me know Fran because whether it's event in the gardens or in Avon or, or wherever, uh, she, uh, she's involved with it. Uh, she proofreads my, uh, my newsletters, make sure that I don't offend somebody in the process. Um, it used to be that when Fran came along, people would say, who's that lady with Paul? Now we go to an event and they say, who's that guy with Fran Burek? <laughs> so she has been uh, by my side. And of course, I want to point out my son Ben Burek and my daughter Katie Burek Faust, uh, now mom herself. Um, I'm sure there were times where uh, you paid the price a little bit me, with me uh, being gone, but they turned out all right. In fact, I have talked to some parents, and after talking to parents, they turned out really good. And I am proud of you guys, and I just hope that now that you are grown adults that you can be proud of me. With that, I think time is up, and we need to introduce the next person. So. Thank you again. It's very meaningful and appropriate. Just a moment. I would just like to say I really enjoyed all the time we were able to spend together with you six and hearing you up tonight uh, in your moment. Personally and selfishly, I'm having a great time listening to your story, so thank you all. Our next uh, presenter, I guess you could say, if this were a basketball court, it would be game recognizes game. And that simply is a term for, as the kids say, someone of the same ilk who pays their respects to another of the same ilk. Ernie Mahalley, uh, his virtues extolled by Dan as he is a member of the class of 2014, uh, symbolizes everything there is about Northeast Ohio and his Hungarian heritage. Let me just read some of this stuff. He's a member of the Cleveland Hungarian Heritage Society, United Hungarian Societies, Hungarian Cultural Center of Northeast Ohio, Hungarian Charity Club, Cleveland Hungarian Development Panel, and the Hungarian Cultural Guards, which are beautiful, multi-tiered, and immaculately kept. So here to introduce our next inductee, Richard Fleischman, is Ernie Mahalley. Ernie, come to the stage. Good evening, everyone. Five years ago today, not today, but five years ago, I had the honor of Richard introducing me. He stood here, and I sat exactly where he is sitting today. So. I would like to introduce Richard Fleischmann, who has been very, very active in the Hungarian community. I would like to take a step backward. When he was going to school at St. Elizabeth's Catholic School on Buckeye Road, the school building was very, very old, very dark, didn't have much light. The stair treads were worn. You could hardly walk up. I think that's when he decided that he wanted to be an architect. <laughs> and he has many, many, many awards that he has received with the beautiful structures that he has. He's the architect of within the city, within the state, and elsewhere. But one stands out to me where the Hungarian Cultural Gardens has an organ concert every year. 
that was in his backyard. He was the architect of a house that overlooks Lake Erie. As you walk into this house on the lower level, there's a very wide staircase going to the second floor. The wall is glass from floor to ceiling. When you get to the second floor, there's a very large concert organ with over 7,600 pipes around you. One wall is open looking over Lake Erie. The other three walls are pipe organs. To me, with all his achievements, he combined architecture, music, and then led in Mother Nature through this large window overlooking Lake Erie. With that said, I would like to invite Richard into the Cleveland Hall of Fame. I'm a kind of different human being. I don't talk about people, I talk about ideas. I live in a world of ideas. I make a distinction between pragmatic and spiritual life. I grew up on Buckeye Road. Circumstance brings me back again to be in that neighborhood. And I found out what I really loved in the 30s and 40s. I was taught by nuns. I was in the fifth grade, and this nun taught me that openness is more than a word. Openness is more than a word. I have a family, three wonderful daughters, but I don't limit that to three daughters. I limit my family to all of you. Whether you like it or not, you're part of my family. Because you're very pragmatic, very creative, and when we use your creative juices, we can make things happen. I was there when they built the gardens on, on, Mar on Martin Luther King. I was there watching put the stone by stone, digging holes in the ground in the 30s. I'm what you call a vintage human being. But, but I brought back to Cleveland ideas. May I read something to you? This is a letter I wrote to the dean at Columbia my first week in, in Athens, Greece. It tells you what I believe in terms of ideas. When I visited San Carlo in Rome, Italy, the organist was practicing for some forthcoming celebration. As the music filled the Borromini space, the sunlight played upon the Baroque detail. It's probably the most dramatic thing I've ever seen. Sunlight coming through the small windows and focusing on a detail. The, the movement of, of space. The plan is a comp composite of five ovals, all merging into each other, and I couldn't quite understand it all. At once, it is so small, yet there is so much. The dome covers the entire space, and no matter where I stood, I felt like I was taking part in the swaying rhythms of architecture and music. 
Isn't that great? So we just don't do things visually, but to appreciate the space and the sound that reverberates the way we live. We create sound. Isn't it marvelous that we can take it and organize it as a piece of art? Not talk about it and get all kinds of awards. I want to say, let's do it. Let's make something happen. So I'm doing a book on the beauty of emptiness. Not the decoration, but the proportion of space. Many philosophers, Kant, Schopenhauer, all those people who talk about the beauty, the definition of beauty, have written about architecture and we don't even listen. Read. Why, is it, why do we have to wait to learn this in the classroom? Why is it part of our life? I'm a missionary. I recognize that. If I lose, I lose. But if I win, I think we have a city that's full of excitement and there's a future. I hope all of you can understand what the future could be. The future is what we need, not analyzing what we did yesterday, but what we could do tomorrow. I thank you for listening to me. life philosopher right there, Richard Fleischman. Thank you. Our next inductee is Marilyn Madigan, who really symbolizes service to others in all of her ventures. I can't, well, I need to save it for her inductor. <laughs> that being said, I was so taken by our conversation that we were able to have ahead of this event. To do those honors is John O'Brien. I'd like to call him up here. John O'Brien is a, a member of the Irish community who really does a lot for everyone here in Northeast Ohio. There you are, sir. We had a good chance to talk beforehand. My goodness. He's the co-founder, publisher, and editor of the Ohio Irish American News. Uh, the Ohio Irish American News is a monthly print news magazine. It's got a lot of reach because we have a lot of proud Irish people here in Northeast Ohio. 176,000 in Cuyahoga County alone, almost half a million in Greater Cleveland, and over a million in the great state of Ohio. It's a strong group of people, a proud group of people. John is one of them. He's also, uh, well, I guess you could say legacy. His father was also very involved, too. Um, he was the president of the West Side Irish American Club for 20 years. And John now takes that mantle and assumes that. John O'Brien introducing Marilyn Madigan. How's the height? Can you hear me? Better? Worse? I could do that all day. Uh, John O'Brien Sr. is actually still the president of West Side Irish American Club. Uh, no worries. Uh, so if, I don't want him to hear about that from someone else. That, he's, that I am taking the mantle. No way, no how, no time. Uh, I'm very delighted and honored to be able to introduce Marilyn. Uh, I was trying to think back, when did I first meet her? And I don't know if it was Camogie, she was playing Camogie and I was playing Gaelic football, or if it was Broomball or the old Irish American Club down in 93rd in Madison. I truly don't remember when, but I know she started writing for the Ohio Irish American News in November of 2016. Does that sound right? Good. Uh, congratulations, this is your 30th issue. So she's been writing for us for 30 issues, so 30 months. Uh, but certainly, the blessing of having Marilyn in my life as a friend for more than 30 years. Uh, in my mind, she's always been a presence, a wise voice. Uh, she's a leader whose perspective I continue to seek out uh, and ask her advice, uh, now more than ever with the newspaper. Uh, they say you can be judged by the company that you keep. I have three older sisters, much older sisters. Uh, in my mind, Marilyn has always been that voice for me. Uh, she's a leader whose perspective uh, is wise. She's been there, she's seen it, she's done it. Uh, I've always found, because of those three sisters, that behind every great woman is another great woman, or maybe more. And Marilyn's team, if you want to call them that, are out there on a table over there, on a table over there, they are the great women behind the great woman. Uh, everywhere we go in the Irish community, Irish events or not, they're there. 
you really have a great team of friendship, a group of people, a fealty, and a love, and they're all that you exemplify, and that's all that they exemplify, and I believe that's all that our great teams exemplify. It's not about us. It's about us together. They say that the greatest of a person can nearly always be measured by their willingness to be kind. I believe that there is no compliment higher in this world than to say that someone has a generous soul. They care more for others than they do for themselves. It's a harder path at the fork in the road to be kind as opposed to being self-centered. You're tired, you're stressed, you're distracted, and you snap out, or maybe you don't help, or you just want to go home and see season eight premiere of Games of Thrones. That might be understandable at first, but anyone that works hard knows that life is hard. Yet life teaches us what really matters. When people are first, when people matter first, we don't write our own legacy. It writes itself. Whether that's a religious legacy, an Irish one, or a community, but most importantly, it's a legacy of a human being forged from life and those around us into a generous soul. I'm sure you have read Marilyn's bio in the book there. I won't uh, because of that. But if you have seen her in person, you've read the diversity, callings, and the willingness to answer the call. So Marilyn doesn't sit there and say, oh, I wish somebody would stop this. Marilyn stands up and says, I will stop this. And she gets involved, whether it be keeping churches open like St. Patrick's on Rocky River Drive, or helping the festivals, or helping the newspaper. Uh, it doesn't matter. Marilyn says, I will help. She grabs the mantle herself and leads the way. The best advice I can give you is don't get in her way. <laughs> she is nice, but she is never, ever weak. A Hall, Hall of Famer doesn't set out to build their own bio. They recognize the tremendous gift we have in life that they are given, and each day that we are exchanging one day of our life for that gift, for something hopefully worthwhile. It's a fair trade for that gift of the day, the week, of your life. They set out to make the world a better place for their being here. That's a Hall of Famer. That's Marilyn Madigan. I would like to first thank Debbie and Dan Hansen and their mom for all and all those that are involved in the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Congratulations to my fellow inductees and thank you John for those kind words. I'm very humbled and honored to receive this award and I have to thank my parents because they've instilled in me my love of my faith, my family, my friendships, my heritage, and my country. An award like this, you do not get alone. It's all those people that have been on your journey with you. So at this time, if I could ask my family and my friends to please stand. Thank you for your love and support. I love my Irish heritage, and I love sharing its rich history and culture with many others. But I am a better person because of the friendships that I have developed, whether it's in my own community or with a great group of nurses that I met over 38 years ago. Each one of these people have shared their own ethnic heritage with me and has made me a better person. I love Cleveland, and what makes Cleveland special is that we've had many immigrants make this area their home. They brought their culture and their traditions and have made Cleveland a treasure. When I look at this class, and I look back at those that have gone before us, starting with the first class, 
they all brought to mind a quote that I heard from Pope John Paul II when he visited Ireland in 1979. I changed one word and added one because he addressed Ireland and he addressed people that had children. I do not have ch children, but I think I have shared myself and my history with others. So if I can conclude with this quote from Pope John Paul II. Keep in contact with your roots in the soil of your heritage, with your families and your culture. Keep true to the faith, to the prayers and values you learned and pass on that heritage to your children and or others for it is rich and good. Thank you very much and I am so humbled. Our final inductee of the evening, alphabetically only, is Sri Srinath, a remarkable individual. Here to speak about him is Ramesh Shah, also a remarkable individual. Ramesh is one of the leaders of the Association of Indian Physicians of Northern Ohio, and that, uh, well, I'll let him explain it, but one of his passions is medical diatra, and that's basically a mission under the umbrella of that association where they reach out to the poor and the destitute in developing countries offer aid. Uh, one example of this is the 2001 earthquake in India uh, where during one of those Yatra missions they managed to help hundreds of villagers there with primary health care, dental, eye care, free medicines and eyeglasses. This is what they do. This is he. He's introducing Sri Srinath. On behalf of Indian community of Northern Ohio, an association of Indian physician, medical yatra. It's my utmost pleasure and honor to you, present Dr. Sri Sinan, my friend and my inspiration in the Hall of Fame. With all the professional awards he received and all the educational achievements which are listed in the souvenir, we are honoring him because his awesome contribution he is making to entire SEVA International Organization. SEVA International has three thousand volunteers spread in 43 locations in the United States in all the major cities and 22 countries overseas. Wow! It's big, it's awesome, it's a unique Seva organization. Sanskrit word Seva means selfless service without any expectation. What does SEVA do? SEVA International has provided services in 25 disasters in the United States, Florida, Texas, North Carolina, and overseas in Canada, Australia, India, UK, Ghana, Colombia, Nepal, and other countries. It, in a way, it supplements the efforts of American Red Cross. They have provided services in Hurricane Harvey, Irma, Maria, California Campfire, largest and most dollar-intensive disaster Seva handle was Nepal earthquake with one million dollars funding. They provided clothing, food packages, medicine packages, shelter, 
and rehabilitation and services. When hundreds of human beings are displaced because of natural calamity, Seva volunteers are on the ground providing comfort, love, and caring. Give them hope and help them to rebuild their lives. In many of these disasters, Dr. Srinath put on his blue jeans and the boots and work side by side with Seva volunteers. According to website, the mission of Seva, we aspire to be the preeminent Hindu faith-based humanitarian organizations that serve selflessly with compassion to create a positive impact we envision and strive for a world in which all people live in harmony, free from suffering. Their inspiration and foundation come from Sami Vivekananda, Indian yogi and philosopher who opened up east to west about 200 years back in Chicago. Seva motto, Nar Seva, Narayan Seva. Serving the humanity is serving the divinity. That is Hindu teaching. To see the its divinity in every human being, irrespective of race, color, creed, age, sex, and any religious affiliation. Seva has also worked very, very hard with Catholic charities to resettle Bhutanese refugees in their new home, United States of America. Again, his bio and rewards, awards are all documented, but let me say with you one very important fact. He also shares and consults his talents and expertise with so many developing countries on issue of water, energy, and policy development. With full-time job as a director of computer science and Gemini program at Case Western, having awesome responsibility in Seva International with 22 countries with different time zone, India being 10 year hours ahead, and some of the Caribbean countries are four or five hours behind. I asked him, Dr. Sinat, when do you get time to rest and sleep? And he chuckled, God has given me 24 hours. Dr. Sinat, with his charismatic, dynamic, creative leadership, and very humble, and his love for humanity, has earned, earned his deserving place in Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Please welcome Dr. Sinat in Hall of Fame. I wish my mother had heard that. Should have been very proud. <laughs> I wish it was all the truth. The truth is really, Seva International is a volunteer-based organization. I just pretend to work the other's work. I take the credit. I get to speak. So, but I am very, very indebted to the cleanpeople.com, Dan and Debbie for making this happen. It's wonderful for Cleveland. 
somebody who has been in this community for 31 years. Since pretty much uh, uh, I came uh, to Cleveland, never thought of leaving, in spite of the gray weather. And uh, I'm also very much indebted to my Cleveland Parivar. Parivar is the name for the family. Uh, please, if you can just uh, stand up my Parivar. Yeah, all my friends in Cleveland who are supporting me and my relatives, my brother and sister-in-law come. And I mostly, uh, this has been able to, I've been able to do anything at all only because of my better half, Shobha. And uh, I have two wonderful children who have helped me learn life quite a bit. Some of the lessons I really didn't want to learn, but they made me learn that anyway. So what I would like to leave you today is with a couple of stories. Mahatma Gandhi famously said that it is not PowerPoints that they will remember. No, he didn't say that. But he said that it is the stories that they will remember. So I want to present to you a couple of stories about Seva. So let's, uh, uh, I'll talk to you about a d disaster which happened very recently, which is the campfire disaster. All of us know it. Paradise City was lost. And uh, there are many people still living in shelters. So our Bay Area chapter, had, along with uh, the various, it's primarily we are Asian Indian uh, volunteer-based organization. It's not that anybody is not welcome, it is just that our strength is that. So we were able to attract these uh, volunteers on a, a parking lot in, on Google and build mobile homes. We are building one mobile home per week and we are donating it to campfire victims. That's uh, uh, a, I think it's uh, pure volunteer work. Okay. Seva is, uh, from a material point of view, we are providing the materials, but our volunteers are the ones who are really hammering it and bringing it into shape. The second uh, story that I would like to tell you is about, there was a Harvey-like uh, disaster floods in southern India in August of uh, 2018. So any time that kind of a uh, disaster happens, we set up with our sister organization anywhere uh, we want to work with in India. We set up a hotline communication. And we have uh, uh, also a hotline communication here for the people who are interested to find out what their relatives or what is the status of their relatives. Because there's a large Indian diaspora. We are about 3 million uh, people in the United States. So the, in this particular state, uh, sliver of uh, uh, the uh, western part, the southern part of uh, uh, India, so Kerala. So uh, this, uh, we would always get calls like, okay, uh, the I cannot, uh, do not know about my mom. She's living in this little village. Can you find out about us? And we would send that information. We would also establish uh, links with the Indian Navy and uh, Air Force, which was uh, rescuing people. Well, in, at, at about uh, 8.56 PM, this is exact, CST, August 18th, we got the following WhatsApp message. Please help. No response from authorities. More than 100 people trapped on top of a government hospital in Kerala. No food, no water. Some of them need urgent medical treatment. Please do rescue operations in this area. We got this from Kerala and our operator, we, we had 24 yeah, hour surveillance and our volunteer in Houston saw this. She immediately contacted our hotline back to the Navy and within four hours, rescue action success, now they are safe. The Navy texted us on WhatsApp. So this is amazing, 10,000 miles travels and we, people talk about the bad things about social media. This is a fantastic success about social media here. Okay, that's the second story. And uh, the third story I want to talk to you about is very locally here. We have a program called Aspire, wherein we are working with Euclid Heights schools and uh, we are working with the uh, athletes uh, in football with the coach who is a volunteer himself. Jeff Rodsky. So Jeff uh, brings us the students and we have put together the uh, a program called Near Peer Tutoring. So we get undergrad, bright undergraduate students from Case Western Reserve. We raise money from community here and we pay these undergraduate students 17 to 20 dollars an hour to go to Euclid Heights High School and do one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Okay, we pay Uber for them. And the results are fantastic. Okay, we had about 74 students 
in uh, Euclid Heights. And uh, this year, about uh, 20 of them graduated from the high school when they were doing Ds and Fs. In a span of one semester, they were able to get As and Bs. They got their scholars, uh, college scholarships, and they are going to college. Two of them are being pursued by Ivy Leagues. This is fantastic success, and you know how much it costs? It costed us $250 per student. Because we do the supervision, our volunteers do the supervision, we take the hard work, and the, uh, our students, this is, you know, connecting the pieces. That's what SEVA is good at. And we are blessed with fantastic volunteers, and we are blessed with donors like you who support us. Thank you very much, and God bless. What a, what a group. As has become our tradition, I hope you all have a glass in front of you. We want to toast the new class. And what we, it's fun to do is to say the toast word in your own language. So I might say slantja, someone might say nizdrobya or prost or whatever. So we're going to toast in Greta and Paul and Akram and Marilyn and Sri and Richard, the 2019 class of the Cleveland International Hall of Fame. Slantja. All right, just two little items of business here. Uh, I told you already about losing our, our incorporating board member, Bill Carney. We have several of our, our board members here. I'd like to introduce them. Uh, John Lewis, would you stand up? Steve Owendorf, Mike Miller, Debbie, Debbie Hansen back there, and our newest board member, Juan Lloyd Powell. Juan, stand up. So you can bug those people if, uh, if you have any problems, if you have compliments, I'm right here. So we're cool there. All right, because it's a tent, we, we thought we'd put, we asked some people for some prizes. We have a raffle. We had all your names to save time. Uh, we went around at dinner, and people like Irene Morrow pulled names. And let's see who we have. There are four prizes. Um, the fourth prize is this floral arrangement. Floral arrangement from Sue Miller, and it goes to Elaine Price. If you are here, Elaine Price. Oh, Do we trust him. Okay, third prize is dinner for two at the Marriott here, and that went to David Murray. Oh. Good. Don't have to walk far. <laughs> yeah, you look Serbian. Uh, the second prize is uh, four box seats to any 2019 Cleveland Indians game, and that goes to fix Dr. Whale Curry. Four seats, Whale. <laughs> who's, who's going with us? <laughs> okay. And the grand prize is a, I think it's a weekend at the Intercontinental Hotel with the hospitality room and alcohol and all that stuff. And um, the name that was picked was Ralph Perk, Jr. So as Rocky comes up, we have two letters from Senator Portman and Senator Brown, and it's, it's funny, they're almost identical, I'm not going to read them, but they not only, you know, they praise the Hall of Fame, hey Rocky, you know, if, if Kelly doesn't want to go, I'm available for that one too, so, yeah, yeah. So both Senator Brown and Senator Portman wrote these letters, and you know, praising the Hall of Fame and all that, but what they both said, unsolicited, they wanted to congratulate the people in the audience, the people who, obviously the six inductees, the community that makes Cleveland better because of your, your appreciation of your ethnic heritage. So if anyone wants to read these, we'll put them online or we'll have them up here. And now, 
what we always do, we, you'll see in the book, we have a class photo. So before you leave, we'll ask our six inductees to go over there. Tim's going to set up some chairs. Any inductees from previous years who are still here, please stick around. After we get the class picture, we'd like you in a picture. And I want to thank you all for coming. I want a special thanks. Chris, would you come up, please? Chris makes this so special. His coverage in the last week, you know, with, with the six inductees, really makes it special, the credibility, it, it just a, it takes it to a whole nother level of professionalism. We really appreciate it. So why don't you take us home then, Chris? We well, thanks so much. What an incredible driving force Dan is, and Debbie too. A round of applause for them. Every year their efforts are tireless, their knowledge is incredible, and their passion for Cleveland and the people therein is unrivaled. Thank you so much for coming out tonight, supporting this incredible organization. It's so meaningful, it's so valuable. You see the people on stage every year and their commitment and their uh, appreciation of the community and the people around them is unparalleled. Thank you for coming out. This night belongs to you. And, oh, by the way, class picture's off to the left. If anyone else wants to get in with their uh, cell phones, uh, we'll be taking them over there. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.